Brothers and sisters, and welcome to the Israel of God's Bible study class here in the Atlanta, Georgia area. We'd like to welcome you if this is your first time out. We thank you for coming out, and we hope that you will learn something today from the Word of God. So as we all start out, we're going to start out with the law. We're going to start with Exodus, the 20th chapter. And the reason why we read the law is because somebody's telling you all the time that you don't have to keep God's commandments. So we want to read the book and see what the scriptures say. That's all that matters at the end of the day. Yes. What somebody tells you and how somebody feels is just that. That's why you got a book. So Exodus 12 or 20. Exodus 20, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 20 and 1. Go ahead, my brother. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God. Yes. Which had brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. All right, let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and read verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. All right. Revelations 22. Pick it up at verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. Hold on. Hold on. Don't go too fast. Everybody ain't from the Israel of God, so. Might have some new people in the house. Okay. Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So we just read to you the book. From Genesis to Revelations, a short synopsis that you cannot read this Bible from Genesis to Revelation and God has not told you not to keep his commandments. Regardless of what the preacher told to you about Paul. Because if you listen to the people, the majority of the pushback is going to come from Paul. One person out of all this book. They're going to debunk the whole Bible. Well, the title of today's class is Paul's Letters Decoded. So what we're going to do, 
We ain't going to read nothing but Paul's letters today. No Old Testament. So you don't have to run if you knew. <laughs> Just straight Paul's letters. We're going to throw in the book of Acts in there too. But mostly it's going to be just Paul's writings. And what we're looking for is, did Paul say something different than what the rest of the prophets and the apostles and Jesus taught? So we're going to start this off in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And we're going to take a close look at Paul. Because sometimes you tell somebody they got to keep the law, they run to Romans 10, Romans 6, Colossians, Corinthians. But they only run into those scriptures because those are the places that the preacher took them. And if you read outside of them and the preacher, the rest of the writings, then you'll find out is what they're saying. They don't have no understanding. Straight up. So, Romans chapter 1. Let's read about Paul. Let's see who he is. Let's see if he's some bald head Gentile <laughs> chilling somewhere, as the pictures show us. See, everything is a lie. The book told you Satan has deceived the whole world. And you got to put that in your mind. Everything you've been taught basically has been a lie. You got to go back and you got to find out what the truth is. Because the world is built on lies, especially if you're looking at a whole bunch of TV. Mm -hmm. So now, one and one, Romans one and one. What the book say? Come on. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. What else? which he had promised be afforded by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So Paul tell you straight up, right off the top, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ, and I was called and I was separated according to the holy prophets and the scriptures. What the book say finished it. Concerning his son Jesus Christ, Come our on. Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. What else? And declared to be the son of God with power, mm -hmm. according to the spirit of holiness, by the res resurrection from the dead. By going to heaven. From the resurrection of the dead. So the book tells you even in New Testament, it talks about the resurrection. Let's go to Romans chapter 11. Let's see what else we can find out about Paul. Romans chapter 11. Pick it up at verse 1. Romans chapter 11. And verse one, what does it say, my brother? I say then, had God cast away his people? God forbid. Wait a minute now. Who are the people of God? That be you. The house of Israel and the house of Judah. Amen. So he asked a question. And then he answered the question. God forbid. What the book say? For I also am an Israelite. He said, I'm an Israelite. Now. Whatever church you came out of, and I was in one too, when I went. <laughs> Have you ever heard that out of the writings of Paul? As a matter of fact, when you go home tonight and you turn on the TV and you're looking at CBN and TV, uh, the ch church channel and the AIB, see if they mention this to you. You never heard this before. And it's right there in Romans. Pick that up and read that again, my brother. I say then, had God cast away his people? God forbid. Mm -hmm. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. All right. So he said, I'm, of the, I'm an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. That means he's not a Jew. Isn't that correct? That's right. Now, so let's go to Acts 26. Acts 26. Acts 26. And pick it up at verse 1. Acts 26 and verse 1. You got to read both of these books. Old and new. The prophets told you that. To the law and to the testimony. If they don't speak according to this, there's no light in them. That's right. There ain't no truth in them. I don't care what they say, how they look, how fashionable they appear. They false prophets. And you got to realize that. 
Because your soul is up for grabs. You got to save yourself, brothers and sisters. Acts 26 and verse 1. Come on. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Mm -hmm. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself. Yes. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. So he said, I'm going to answer for myself. So we want to find out what Paul is going to say for himself. He can talk for himself. He don't need us to interpret what he's saying. What do you say, brother? Verse three. Come on. Especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, I beseech thee to hear me patiently. Come on. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews, mm -hmm. which know me from the beginning. Yes. If they would testify that after the most straight set of our religion, I live a Pharisee. What else? And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. So who was the promises made to? Our fathers. Did it make to the church? He said to his what? His fathers. His fathers. That's right. Because he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What did he say, brother? Unto which promise our 12 tribes. How many tribes? 12 tribes. Oh, wait a minute now. We got us a problem. What's that doing in there? That don't supposed to be in there. So that means Israel is still what? It's still good, ain't it? Amen. What did he say, brother? Instantly serving God day and night. What else? Hope to come. Mm -hmm. For which hope sake? King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. All right. Now, let's go see what Paul is supposed to do. What is the mission? Let's go to Romans, the 15th chapter. Romans 15, and we're going to pick it up at 15. Romans 15 and 15. Romans 15 and 15. Because Paul preached the gospel, we're going to find out what the gospel is. Through the book. Romans 15 and 15. Go ahead. Nevertheless, brethren, mm -hmm. I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort. Come on. As putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God. What else? That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. He said, I'm going to minister of Jesus Christ to the who? The Gentiles. To the Gentiles. Not to the house of Israel. Like what you see on YouTube. The Gentiles. The Romans, the Colossians, the Corinthians. These are the Gentile nations. What do he say, brother? Ministering the gospel of God. Yes. That the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable. Come on. Being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. I have therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. Come on. For I will not declare to speak of any of those things. Wait a minute. Read that again. Slow it down. Read that verse again. 18. Come on. For I will not declare to speak of any of those things. Wait a minute. You might got a different Bible. <laughs> I will not dare. Verse 18. For I will not speak of any of those things. <laughs> Come on, Nate. <laughs> I didn't Pick write, it up. I didn't it write up. it, brother. What type of book that is? I didn't write it. That's the King James Version. <laughs> pick, pick up 18 again. And okay. Story. You wouldn't put the word dare in there? <laughs> That's what it said. That's but, what, and what y'all Bible say? Yeah. Thank you. So you outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I didn't I, write it. <laughs> I'll read it for him. For, for I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ had not wrought by me. So he said... I'm not going to tell you anything that Christ have not wrought, old English word, meaning work, by me. So how can you tell me that Paul is telling you that the first day of the week is the Sabbath day, and Paul is saying for himself, I ain't going to tell you nothing that Christ or the apostles haven't told me. You lying. Or you don't know no book, which is, won't do you no good. Because you're looking for information on trying to save yourself. What did the book say? Finish there. To make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Wait a minute. To make the Gentiles what? 
Obedient. Obedient to what? By word. If there's no law, then what are you obeying? That's right. See, somebody got to ask some questions. That's why we get thrown out because we ask questions. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, sir. But where are you reading this at? What are you talking about? Where is your book? These are questions you need to ask your opponent across the aisle. Make sure you have your book and make sure you know some knowledge. Then you can ask them some questions. And then you'll find out they don't know what you think they know. So he says, I have not, I have not dared to speak of those things which Christ have not wrought in me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and by deed. That means you got to do some what? Some work. So somebody told you, you ain't not do no works. Christ did it all for you. Who you going to believe? You going to believe the book or you going to believe the preacher? You better lean on this book and you better start reading it if you haven't. Because your only way out is Christ. You see they snuffing you out with the gas and your food. The famine is coming. Christ is your only way out. Uh, where we at? Hebrews. Because we got to go find. Did we finish that? We finished 18. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. We're going to stay right here in the letters of Paul. We are not going anywhere. Hebrews 4, pick it up at verse 1. Because he said he preached the gospel, didn't he? We got to find out what the gospel is. Is it the gospel of prosperity? Where I put a garbage can up front and you come down there and put the money in there? And then I live good and I buy me suits and alligator shoes. The preacher living good and everybody else struggling. Something wrong with that picture, ain't it? Because he's supposed to be a servant of you, don't he? He that is greatest among you shall be your what? Shall be your servant. That means the preacher's supposed to serve you. Hit him with that and see how long he'll be around you. Four and one. Hebrews four and one. Come on. Let us therefore fear. Yes. Lest a promise be left us of entering in his rest. Mm -hmm. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Come on. For unto us was the gospel preached. For unto us. Who is the us that the gospel was preached to? Paul is talking to the who? The Hebrews. So unto us was the gospel preached. What did he say, brother? As well as unto them. Yes. But the word preached did not profit them. Yes. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Wait a minute. So it ain't mixed with what? A faith. So faith, you can't, it's impossible to please God. So you got to have the word and you got to have what? Faith. Both of them go together. What you got is people got faith, don't have no word. Then you got the word and don't have no faith. So it said it didn't profit them because it needs to be mixed with faith, belief. Now, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, he said the gospel was preached unto them as well as us. It was preached unto your forefathers and now it is preached unto us in this generation. First Thessalonians chapter two, pick it up at verse one. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse one. Come on, my brother. For yourselves, brethren, know our interest in unto you mm -hmm. that it was not in vain. What else? But even after that, we had suffered before and were shamefully entreated, as ye know, at Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God, which much contention. He was what? Bold. So that means when you go out here and you speak this book, you're supposed to be what? Bold. bold. Right, amen. You put that book on the table and you watch them demons just roll back. Sometimes you just pull out the book. And they just run. You ain't even, you ain't even did nothing yet. <laughs> I tell this story all the time. In, my, in, in the subdivision I used to live in, I could always tell when the Jehovah's Witness was there.
Because every Saturday morning, people, Israel getting up, cutting their grass, lawnmowers running. And I know exactly when they're there. Lawnmowers not running. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get a knock on my door. And I just open the door and stand behind it and say, come in. <laughs> and they looking. I said, come in. And they walk in. And I said, good morning, how are you doing? And I close the door. <laughs> and I lock it. <laughs> and I said, would you like some water? Please sit down. Welcome to my home. And they said, yes, we would like to just share with you the word of God. I said, okay, let me grab my Bible. And I sit down there and I listen to them. And I said, what about this? What about this? What about that? Well, we'll have to go get somebody else. Yeah, other elder that's right. <laughs> that can come and talk to you. I said, well, you're not ready to go, are you? Because I do have to let you out. <laughs> Study to show yourself what? Approved. So, what verse we at? Verse 3. Come on. For our exaltation was not of deceit. Yes. Nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. Come on. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. Wait a minute. So you are allowed to be put in trust with this gospel. That's right. God has given it to you to deliver it to the people. Yes. What did he say, brother? Even so, we speak, not as pleasing men, mm -hmm. but God. Yes. Which tries our hearts. Mm -hmm. For neither at any time use we flattering words. Come on, come on, come on. As come you on. know. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, get the gospel. Nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness. Come on. Nor of men sought we glory, neither of you, nor yet of our others, when we might be, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. What else? But we are gentile. We are gentle among you. He said we. He said we are what? Gentle among we're, you. We are gentle. Well, you see them on YouTube cussing the sisters out, cussing the Gentiles out. What's gentle about that? Obviously, somebody has not read. The book. Because the book tell you how to deal with the people. What do you say, brother? Even as nurse cherishes her children. Even as a nurse cherishes her children. Verse 8, come on. So being affectionately de desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, yes. but also our own souls because ye were dear unto us. What else? For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail for laboring night and day. Well, I thought you didn't have to do no works, Nate. I'll tell you, you said you got to labor night and day. I thought Christ did it all for you. Mm. The book say you're going to be judged according to your what? Works. Your works. That's right. What did he say? Because we would not be chargeable unto any of oh, you. Oh, God, read that again. We will not be chargeable unto you. Your preacher is charging you for everything. Highlight that and go read it to him, please. What did he say? We preach unto you the gospel of God. We preach unto you the gospel of God. What? You, Verse 10. Ye are witnesses and God also. How holy and justly and unblameable we behave ourselves among you that believe. What else? As ye know, how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children. What else? That ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. He said that ye would walk worthy of God because he's called you. How did he call you? Did he pick up the phone and call you? <laughs> or did somebody drop the book on you? How did you find out about God? Through his word. Amen. Somebody came up to you with a book and read it to you, didn't they? Amen. So that's God calling you. Mm -hmm. You weren't in no shower when you, God talked to you. 
Somebody call you to preach. Preach what? What he said. Verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when we when ye receive the word of God, which ye heard of us. Wait a minute. So they received, the Thessalonians received the word of God, which they had of us. We were the ones that brought it to them. Amen. That's why Paul is a minister unto the Gentiles. What he say? Ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Read verse 14. Go ahead. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God. Where the churches of God at? Where they at, Nate? Which is in Judea. Which are in where? Judea. Wait a minute, I thought it was in Rome. Because we live in what? Judea. So the church of God and Christ <laughs> is in where? Judea. According to who? Paul, the apostle. What did he say, brother? Finish that. In Christ Jesus, who ye also have suffered like things of your own country, of your countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. So Paul is telling them, you suffer these light things because when you bring that book to the people and the people take the book to their people, then they people reject the word of God. Yes. But the word of God comes from Judea. According to what you read. Amen. Not according to what you think they believe. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Because contrary to popular belief, you need a preacher. Romans chapter 10, and we're going to pick it up at verses 1. I'm sorry, verse 11. Romans chapter 10, verse 11. Romans chapter 10 and verse 11. Romans chapter 10 and verse 11. Y'all all right, Israel? Yeah. All right, good stuff. Romans chapter 10 and verse 11. Come on, my brother. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Wait a minute, the scriptures say that? So he quoting scriptures to them? Go ahead, my brother. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Well, wait a minute, well, who are the Greeks? Is that the house of Israel? No, it's not. The Greeks are Plato, right? Socrates. Those are the Greeks. What do you say, brother? Excuse me. Verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Only Israel going to be saved. What does whosoever mean? I have to point this out as we go because obviously somebody don't understand what they read. Or can't read one or the, one or the other. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So you got to know the name in order to be what? Saved. What if you don't know the name? You're not saved. What if you're confused about the name? Yes. Is it Yahweh Shai? Is it Yahuta? You got 10 Hebrew caps with 10 different names, but one book. That shows you that there's confusion. Amen. Yes. And the Spirit of God is not in the midst. Just stick with Jesus. It'll get you there. Amen. Amen. That's the one in your book, ain't it? Yes. Didn't God put you over here on the ships? Yes. Don't you speak English? Yes. And the dude that's reading the Bible to you, he reading it to you in English. Notice he ain't speaking it to you in Hebrew, right? right. Or oh, what he says, Hebrew. Right. Don't let nobody fool you and flip you. What verse we at? Verse 14. Come on. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? He said, how can they call on him in whom they not believe? What did he say, brother? And how shall, they, how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So nobody heard of the Jesus of this Bible. You got the other Jesus, the Christ. What did he say? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How they going to hear without a preacher so much for you saying, I can teach myself and the Holy Ghost going to teach me? We cutting all them lies down as we go, ain't we? 
What he say? Verse 15. Come on. And how shall they preach except they be sent? How you know he been sent? You don't know no book. He stand up telling you something. Yeah, he looked good. He got a cross big as a hubcap around his neck. <laughs> but has he been sent? You got to test him and see if he a man of God or not. Pull out that book on him. Sisters, you do it too. You pull out that book on him. You be real nice. Yes, sir. <laughs> I want to read this to you, sir. <laughs> Are you questioning me? No, sir. You got the Holy Ghost? Yes, sir. <laughs> That's why I got the book. And you put that book on it. So how shall they preach except they be sent? What the book say, verse 15? As it is written. As it is written. How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. That preach the gospel of hate. Of peace. Didn't Paul just tell you that I'm gentle when I'm dealing with the people? But you see the dude standing on the corner hollering at them. And sisters, you get the brunt of it too, boy. They really got something against y'all. You might get cussed out in five different languages. You better say hey or something. What do you say, brother? And bring glad tidings of good things. And bring glad tidings of good things. What do you say? But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Well, if, wait a minute. If there's no law, what do you have to obey? Ask somebody that question. If there's no law, what am I obeying? Because the book say they have not all obeyed the gospel. What the book say? As Isaiah saith. The Lord who has believed our report. He said, as Isaiah said, Lord, who have believed our report? What do you say, brother? So then faith cometh by hearing. And what else? And hearing by the word of God. So your faith is based off what? The word of God. You don't hear no word of God, what your faith is in. What some man tells you, just like Paul told you in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So you believe in some man. That's why you always say, the preacher said this. Okay, now let's go to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Don't you love the writings of Paul with some understanding? 2 Timothy chapter 3, and pick it up at verse 14. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14. This is Paul's letters decoded. We have to decode them. Two, Second Timothy two and three. What is Second Timothy two and fourteen? Go ahead, my brother. I thought you said three. You said Second Timothy three and fourteen. That's what you said. All right, that's why you got to watch the preacher. <laughs> that's why you got to watch him. Three and fourteen. Come on. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, mm -hmm. knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Knowing of whom. Thou has learned them. What do you say, brother? And that from a child thou has known the Holy Scriptures. From a, from a child you've known the what? The Holy Scriptures. The Holy Scriptures. What do you say? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. It's the Scriptures that's going to make you what? Wise. And it's going to get you some what? Salvation. If you hold on to the end. Amen. No script. It's going to be rough for you. What did he say? Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. What did he say, brother? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. What else? And it's profitable for doctrine. Yes. And reproof. Come on. For correction. What else? For instruction in righteousness. So the scriptures are going to guide you. They're going to motivate you and they're going to correct you so you can be on the right path. Amen. Notice that when you come into this truth, you start backing up off the stuff of the world. You leave the pork and the shrimp and the catfish alone. Your weight go down a little bit. The more you come out of the world, the more you light up. Mm -hmm. So when people see you, they start saying, wow, there's something different about you. That's those spirits, they recognize you. I remember when I first came in this thing, and um, I used to go get my hair cut when I had some. 
<laughs> I, I used to always have me a six pack. Always. So I go to the barbershop and I'm sitting there in the chair because I'm usually if I'm in the barbershop, I'm leaving there on my way to go home to put my rags on so I can go out and cut the town, right? So I'm sitting there in the chair, the brother getting ready to cut my hair. And, um, you know, matter of fact, I was reading before he called me to get in the chair, which was an amazing thing. And um, so he, he in the chair, he cut my hair. He said, man, he said, can I ask you something? I said, what? He said, man, something different about you, man. I said, what? He said, man, I ain't never seen you read nothing when you come in here. I ain't never seen you without a bill. And he said, you okay? <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm okay, brother. Then I started to explain to him what had happened. But see, they see the difference in you. Yes, they do. Your family see the difference in you when you go around them. That's that light that's coming out. What verse we at? Verse 17. Come on. That the man of God may be perfect. Yes. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Wait a minute. I thought you had to do no works. Thought you didn't have to do no works. Paul didn't say that, did he? No, he didn't. First Timothy, uh, Second Timothy chapter 4 and pick it up at verse 1. Come on. I yes. charge thee therefore before God mm -hmm. and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at the, his appearance and his kingdom. So when he going to judge the quick and the dead? At his kingdom. At his kingdom. His Is the kingdom here? No. Where the dead folks are? In the grave. It's just that simple. That's right. They got some bad teaching. They got the, um, the ancestor worship. We done picked that up. Where you dealing with your ancestors. You pouring out libation to your ancestors. Your ancestor is sleep. <laughs> he or she don't know nothing what you're doing. And they can't protect you. They can't do nothing for you. Them spirits know that you're there, though. And you can get a couple of them latched to you if you keep messing, and messing around with that stuff. What do you say, my brother? Verse 2. Come on. Preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reproof, rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. What else? For the time will come when they when they will not endure sound doctrine. What else? But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers mm -hmm. having itchy ears. Come on. And they shall turn away their ears away from the truth. And they're gonna turn their ears away from the truth. What do he say? And shall sh and shall be turned unto fables. Come on. But watch thou in all things endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Make full proof of thy ministry. Let me give you a favor. The angel sleeping with women. That's a big one right there. The Hebrews giving that to you. I asked him, I said, well, if the angel sleeping with the women, in Atlanta you got 36 women to one man. Won't the angel take up the surplus? <laughs> This is some foolishness. Yes. Did we finish there? We're on verse 6. We're on verse 6? Okay, good. All right. Acts 18 and 1. Acts 18 and 1. Let's see if Paul told you that you're supposed to meet on the first day of the week. Because <clears throat> somebody will go to Acts and read to you where they broke bread on the first day of the week. You're going to break bread tomorrow, ain't you? That's the first day of the week, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you break bread every day, don't you? Acts 18, pick it up at verse 1. Acts 18 and verse 1. Acts 18 and verse 1. Come on, my brother. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Well, wait a minute. Where is Athens at? In Greece, right? Come on, what did he say, brother? And found a certain Jew named Aquila, mm -hmm. born of Pontus, lately came from Italy, 
with the, with the wife Priscilla mm -hmm. because the, the, the Claudius had uh, com commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and come unto them. Okay, so Paul is departed from Athens and Corinth and all Israel is in what? In Most of them are scattered just like we're scattered right now in right. America. Mm -hmm. You got some Israelites that's over there in Italy just like we are over here. So Claudius made a decree and kicked everybody out or kicked them out, right? What do you say, brother? Verse three. Come on. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought. For by their occupation, they were tent makers. What else? And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. Wait a minute. He reasoned in the synagogue when? Every Sabbath. Every Sabbath day, he reasoned in the synagogue. Now, this is after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul is going in the synagogue every Sabbath day. What did he say, brother? And persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Wait a minute. He's, he, just the Israelites. The Jews and the Greeks. What else? And when Silas and Timothy uh, were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. What else? And when they opposed themselves... And, and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said unto them, your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From henceforth, I will go unto the Gentiles. I will go to the Gentiles. The Gentiles. Go here, my brother. Verse 7. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justus, one that worshiped God, whose house joined hard to the a synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians heard, hearing, believed, and were baptized. So first you hear the word of God, you believe, and then you get what? Baptized. baptized. Yes. What do you say, brother? Then spake the Lord to then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by vision. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. But speak. Come on. And and hold not thy peace. What are you? Go ahead. For I am with thee. For I'm with you. And no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. So wait a minute. So Paul, so God is telling Paul, I'm with you wherever you go. That's right. Don't worry about nothing. Just preach. What he say? For I have much people in this city. He said, I got how many people? Much people in this city. So we got much people in this Atlanta region though. Yes. 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 Much people. That's why when we go to these different cities, we are going there and we are trying to find people that want to hear the word of God and setting up shop just like our forefathers did. Yes. We're doing it just like the books say do it. What do you say, brother? Verse 11. Come on. And he continued there a year and six months. Yeah, we can't stay a year and six months. <laughs> get a, we can get a weekend on it. <laughs> What did he say? Teaching the word of God among them. He said, and you stayed there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. So we see that Paul kept the Sabbath day and he talked to people about the Sabbath day. Correct? Yes, that's right. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's go see if we can find something else. 1 Corinthians. That's all we got to do is take our time, sit down and read the book. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, pick it up at verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. 5 and 1. Let's see if the feast day is in there. Go ahead. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. Yes. And such fornication as is not so much as name among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. Go ahead. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. Skip down to verses uh, six and read. Your glory is not good. Mm -hmm. Know you not that a little leaven leaven the whole lump? Go ahead. Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. Go ahead. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So the Passover is the Christ. Yes. 
What is Paul doing talking about the Passover in 1 Corinthians if you don't have to keep these feast days? That should be your question to the person on the other side of the seat. Amen. What do you say, brother? Verse 8. Come on. Therefore, let us, therefore, let us keep the feast. Yes. Not with a leaven, neither with the leaven of malice or and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 20, pick it up at verse 3. Acts chapter 20, pick it up at verse 1, I'm sorry. Acts chapter 20 and verse 1. 20 and 1. 20 and 1. All we're doing is reading the letters of Paul. We want to make sure we cover these letters. So if anybody come to you talking crazy, you know what to do now. If they don't want to go nowhere else, that's fine. Stay right there in the letters of Paul with them. Acts chapter 20, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him that disciples and embraced them and departed for, for to go into Macedonia. Mm -hmm. And when he had gone over those parts, he had given them much exhortation. And he came into Greece. So he came unto Greece. What was there when he got there? And there abode three months. Mm -hmm. And when the Jews laid wait for him, as he was about to um, sail into Syria, he proposed to return through Macedonia. All right. Skip down to verse six. And what happened? And, and when he sailed and when he sailed away from Philippi after the day of the unleavened bread and came unto them to to Taurus in five days where we abode seven days. So look, he left one place. He stayed there for a little while to after the days of what? Unleavened, unleavened bread, bread because he got to keep the what? The, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. This is all hid away in the book of Acts and the letters yes. Yes. that people don't read. What do you say, brother? Verse seven. Uh -huh. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread. Oh, here's the script. Here we go. Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow and continue his speech unto midnight. So that's the script that's going to take down the Sabbath. That's taking down the Sabbath. That's what you're hanging your hat on. Well, I want you to come up and slap that hat off. <laughs> With the scriptures, of course. So Paul preached unto them until he departed on the first day of the week. Now, did we finish that verse? Yeah, we on verse 8 now. Go skip down to verse 16 and what that says. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia. Mm -hmm. For he has for he hasted. For if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. So why is he running? He's trying to and get hasten to, yep, that's right. to get back to when? To Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Right. So he can keep the day of what? Pentecost. Because he got 49, roughly 49 days to get back over there, right? That's right. So somebody lying on Paul, right? Because obviously he's doing something different than what is being communicated to you. Now let's go to Ephesians. Chapter 2, pick it up at verse 11. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. 2 and 11. Go ahead. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, mm -hmm. who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision, in the flesh made by hands. What else? That at that time ye were without Christ. Yes. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Come on. And strangers from the common the, the covenant of promise. Yes. Having no hope and without God in the world. What do he say? But now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So Christ is the one that brings everybody together. What do you say, brother? For he is our peace. Yes. Who hath made both one. Come on. And hath broken down the middle wall of partition 
between us. What else? Having abolished in the flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make himself tw of twain one new, one new man, so m m making peace. So, verse 15, somebody might bring you here and say, well, see, Brother Baca, it says, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of the commandments contained in the ordinances. So they'll say, well, see, that's when he, that's when he took away the commandments. Well, we're going to find out if that's true. Okay? Go ahead. What verse? Verse 16. Go ahead. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the, the enmity thereby. Go ahead. And come and preach peace to you which were far off. How many times we got to read what you're supposed to be preaching before we believe it? Mm -hmm. So now when you go turn YouTube on, you'll know what the deal is, don't you? What did he say? And to them that were nigh. Come on. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. What else? Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Well, let's see what the household of God is. Go ahead. And are built up the foundation of the apostles and prophets. So you got to have who? The apostles and the prophets. Both of them. That's right. So don't nobody just come read to you the writings of Paul without reading to you Isaiah, Ezekiel, Moses. Amen. Because that's what the house is built on. What did he say? Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone. And you got to read Jesus. Because he's the chief cornerstone. Now let's go see if this is true, because I pointed out to you that somebody might come to Ephesians chapter 2 and read you verse 15 and say that the commandments are done away with. They've been nailed to the cross. You read it right there, Brother Baca. It's right there in your face. Let's see if that's true. We're going to stay in the same letter. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter 6 and read verse 1. We ain't going to even go to a different letter. I'm going to show you how people just control by what they hear and not going doing the necessary research to find out what thus saith the Lord. Yes. And you got to be obedient because God won't give you that understanding unless you be obedient. You read the Bible. So I read the Bible all the way through. And then you ask them a question. Don't have no understanding. Because you got to obey too. Now, let's go see if the law been done away with according to what Paul wrote in the Ephesians. We had Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 1. When you get that, Nate, read it to the people. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Uh-oh. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. What do he say, brother? For this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, mm. which is the first commandment with promise. Well, wait a minute. What's that doing now? I thought the law was done away with. All you had to do was read down to chapter 6. And you would have found out that the cat that's in front of you is lying to you. Mm -hmm. Trying to take your soul away from you. What did he say? Read it. Verse 3. That it may be well with thee, mm -hmm. and thou mayest live long on the earth. Come on. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to mm -hmm. wrath. Come on. But bring them up in the nature and admonition of the Lord. He said, fathers, don't provoke your children to wrath. Bring them up in the admonitions of the Lord. But the book told you obey your father and your mother, didn't it? That's right. In Exodus, that's why we read the law, didn't we? So Paul is co-signing the law. He just told it to you out of his own mouth. Let's go get another. Let's go use him again. Let's go to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, read verse 1. Romans chapter 7 and verse 1. Romans chapter 7 and verse 1. Romans chapter 7 and verse 1. Go here. Know you not, brethren? Yes. But I speak to them that know the law. What do you say? How that the law had the dominion over a man as long as he liveth. Well, wait a minute. What are we going to do with that? If you live and you under what? Let's see which law he's talking about. Read the next verse. For the woman which has a husband is bound by the law to her husband. Uh-oh. 
So all you got to do is say, ain't no law? No, brother. Where your wife at? <laughs> all of a sudden, the law is good and holy and just. Mm -hmm. What did he say? So long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. What did he say? So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. Come on. But if her husband be dead, mm -hmm. she is free from that law. Come on. So that she is no adulteress. Now don't the law tell you thou shalt not commit what? Adultery. So the house is built on the apostles and the who? Prophets. The prophets. What did he say, brother? That she be married to another man. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, my brethren. So he said, if she be married to another man and the husband be not dead, she is a what? An, an adulteress. adulteress. I remember I read that at a wedding one time. People came back and told me they got mad. I said, well, I'm just reading it in the book. We're trying to prevent people from getting divorces. You just can't take the good stuff. Mm -hmm. You got to deal with all of it. So you'll know what you're getting yourself into. Maybe you'll back up. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 8. Because he said you got to keep the law as long as you live it. Ain't that what he just told you? Hebrews 8, pick it up at verse 6. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6. We reading the writings of Paul. That's what we're doing. We being obedient servants and children to the most high God. Hebrews 8, pick it up in verse 6. Hebrews 8 and verse 6. Let's see what his law is. Go ahead. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Come on. Which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should not to no place have been sought for a second. Come on. For finding fault with them, yes. he saith, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Wait a minute, I thought the covenant was made with the church. I thought the church took over on the day of what? Pentecost. <laughs> well, how the church going to take over the day of Pentecost and the church ain't keeping Pentecost? <laughs> And don't know what Pentecost is. <laughs> so the covenant is with the house of Judah and the house of Israel. That's right. And the house of Judah and the house of Israel, just in case you don't know, is not in their land right now. Yes. They're scattered to the four corners of the earth. Yes. Yes. Because of disobedience mm -hmm. by their forefathers. What did he say, brother? Verse 9. Come on. Now, according to the covenant that I will make with thee, after, with thy fathers in the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. Led them out of the land of where? Egypt. Where is Egypt at Israel? And nobody better not say the Middle East. You better not say it. It was in Africa. That's a lie that's been given to you, too. Yes. Look up church here. What did he say? Because they continue not in my covenant. He said, because they continue not in my covenant, what the book say. And I regarded them not saved the Lord. Well, wait a minute. I thought once you were saved, you was always what? Saved. Well, he said, if you don't continue in the covenant, I won't even regard you. What the book say? Finish it. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, yeah. saith the Lord. Come on. I will put my laws in their mind. I'm going to put my laws on the fringes. In their mind. In your mind. Don't you carry your mind everywhere you go? Or at least you're supposed to. So if you got the fringes on and you see a pretty woman, if she half naked, then you might jump her, won't you? <laughs> Because you left your friends at home on the sofa. <laughs> but if it's in your head, then you know to keep walking, aren't you? Amen. Amen. 
What the book say? And write them in their hearts. And write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God. What else? And they shall be to me a people. So the covenant is hooked up. If you are in the covenant, then you dealing with God. If you're not in the covenant, then you're not dealing with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. The one that's in this book. Paul is telling you these things. We need to take heed. 